And you mentioned that. I mean, obviously, when ChatGPT four came out, they said, "Okay, it's it's only got information on the internet up to twenty twenty one," which I guess was to try to keep it somewhat siloed. But quickly, like you said, we saw plugins to where it could access the internet. Then AutoGPT, where it can get real time feedback from the internet. And then now you're telling me about Chaos GPT. Um, you know, and then every week something new is coming up here with that. Yeah. Uh, and that's just Moloch again. Of course, if you make this most powerful tool ever available to everybody in the world, of course everybody's going to want to mess with it. Right. I was just invited to some hackathon in India with a thousand people who are going to try to do auto GPT, to create recursive self improvement, you know, which is the sort of thing which could lead to super intelligence eventually. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, why? Why are we doing this? And it's obvious, you know, a bunch of bright eyed kids in India, it's exciting. They probably thought a lot less about the risks from this than the CEOs of those companies. And they have, so they have the, these incentives, but we shouldn't give people so, <laughs> the, the self destructive incentives. You know, there's a reason why you're not allowed to go buy as much fentanyl as you want in any supermarket because you're giving the wrong incentives to people. And, and there's a reason why you're not allowed to buy hand grenades in the supermarket or nuclear weapons in the supermarket also. I think here we have, an, again, this just funny culture clash, you know. AI, AI has developed so recently that many people in the field are stuck in the past, remembering that AI is useless, it's just a toy, so of course it should be free and unregulated. It's like, why would you regulate philosophy, right? You wouldn't. Uh, and they have very quickly transitioned to being science like physics or biology, which can cause huge harm, huge harms. And those other, but you know, ever since Hiroshima and Nagasaki, every physicist knows that you shouldn't just open source nuclear weapons design. And uh, any biologist today who works in synthetic sin bio, you know, would know that you shouldn't just let people use DNA printers to print smallpox or other harmful pathogens, you know, that you, you obviously need to uh, uh, restrict certain things just so that you don't give people the wrong incentives, right? And AI just has to, AI research, AI, AI field just has to uh, wake up and smell the coffee and realize that they have just as much social responsibility now as these other fields. If, if it, because they are impacting society. They already have caused a lot of harm in society. And uh, there's going to be a lot more unless, unless they get with it. So they, they, it's more lucky. They, you said they already have caused a lot of harm. What do you mean by that? Uh, look in the world today, for example. I would argue that there is way more hatred in the Western world, especially now, than, than um, there was even five years ago. Not just between countries, um, but also within countries. So many Republicans and Democrats here in America can hardly talk to each other anymore at Thanksgiving parties. You know, why is that? You know, it, it's popular to just blame um, blame uh, populist politicians, but we've had populist politicians for as long as we've had politicians. I'll tell you, what's new is technology. This is very much caused by artificial intelligence. We had these super powerful algorithms used by social media companies that were given the very innocent seeming goal of growing the profits of these companies by maximizing engagement. In other words, maximizing how many ads people watch. And they were trained on enormous amounts of data and they quickly discovered things that even the creators of this just hadn't anticipated. Namely, that the best way to drive engagement is to make people really angry. And it doesn't matter so much if what you make them angry with is necessarily true or not. Um, what matters is just, you know, how many ads they stay on and watch. And this has driven these incredible filter bubbles that we have. And I feel done quite serious harm already to our democracies. We also have, we broke a very sad record in America last year in suicides. Uh, huge rise in suicides a uh, number of years in a row now. And I also think that things that aren't counted as suicides, like uh, the opioid crisis, 
are often a little bit suicides and, and disguised. Life expectancy is down four years in a row in the U.S. Uh, I think artificial intelligence also shares a bit of a blame here. A lot of social alienation has come from social media. There are some heart-wrenching uh, psychology papers I've seen about teenage girls. Yeah, you know, like one third, if I remember correctly, of all teenage girls in America now have been, has been thinking been thinking about suicide. Often has to do with the fact that they keep checking about what too much what people say about them on social media, and they're so hung up on getting getting more likes and hurt by people trolling them and body shaming them and get very unhealthy body images. You know, what's the root cause of this? It's artificial intelligence. And underlying that, it's Moloch again, right? If if you're once you create the system where all these teenage girls suddenly are competing with each other for attention in this new unhealthy way, none of these girls can <laughs> just stop because then they get if the others don't also stop. So let's we need to create a society with incentives that bring out the best in us, you know not the worst in us. And I gave you two examples of, of bad things that AI has clearly already been involved in. That should serve as a wake-up call, I think. Yeah, it's oftentimes people blame social media, but it really is AI on those platforms because without those, yeah. there would be maybe no social media or an effect of social media. And you didn't even get into the and ads. if there were no AI, yeah. yeah, exactly. And if there were no AI on it, then... Uh, the, con the mix of content that we would get would not have been in this race to the bottom that they were experiencing now. Right? That's totally driven by optimization. Moloch always optimizes things. <laughs> it, right. it, it, and um, there's some, some kinds of uh, competition that's very healthy. You know, if you ask what does the free market help with, it, Sometimes competition is good. You get better better deal on bananas if there's more than one seller, and and so on. So we we, we want to we want to make sure that the kind of competitions that we get in are the, the healthy kind, not the kind where it's an out of control arms race, or an out of control race between teenage girls about who can have the most likes or show the most show the most skin in her selfies, or or. Is another just very concrete example. You know, these beauty filters. Liv Boré made this excellent point recently in an interview that uh, as an influencer, she's noticed everybody else is using these women influencers using these beauty filters, and she wants to just be herself. But everybody else is now tweaking their faces a little bit, so she's had to start too. But then everybody's doing it, and then they, and then you get an even more extreme beauty filter, and more extreme, and more extreme, and everybody gets sucked into this. In the end, nobody is getting a particularly larger market share than they had before because everybody's using these beauty filters. Everybody got worse off, and Moloch wins, right? Yeah. So Jim Rickards has just recorded a video that's not available to anyone in the public, and he's going to be talking about how this upcoming recession is going to be fast. It's going to be bloody. It's going to be nasty. But at the same time, he's going to show you how you can position yourself to profit from all of this chaos. Now, we've made this video only available to our viewers. Go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim. Watch that immediately. I can't say enough good things about Jim Rickards. He understands the global economic system better than any guest I've ever had on London Real. His predictions are almost uncannily true and you can learn how to profit from his vision, from his expertise, and his understanding of economics. So go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim or click the link below. It's an excellent, excellent look on what's gonna happen in the future and how you can position yourself to profit from that. Jim is one of the best in the business, one of my favorite guests on London Real, and he's very, very good at predicting the future and showing us all to profit from it. So click the link and I hope you enjoy. Hey, do you want to profit from crypto? Then join my DeFi Academy. The Crypto DeFi Academy will help you create generational wealth. But don't take my word for it. Listen to my students. When I first got into crypto, I remember thinking to myself, I need to learn more. Brian Rose, learning crypto, learning DeFi, gotta do it. I am so grateful that I jumped in and did this. I had to break through some limiting beliefs 
that I can do this, that I can afford this, that I can be in this. It challenges um, the things that are deeply rooted within us. Joining DeFi Academy has been one of the best decisions I have made on my blockchain journey. This course was a life changer, a game changer, a huge eye opener, coming from knowing practically nothing at the speed of the learning over the over four weeks was just fantastic. The information you provided in this class was invaluable. I feel far more confident in my next steps. We took complex concepts and made them easier to understand. What's different than so many other ones is it just doesn't tell you what to do. It uh, actually makes you do it. This is for people who are serious about becoming traders. This is the way it should be done. I realized from this learning experience again that it is not about what you learn, but about who you learn it from. The energy was insane. I've, I've never experienced such incredible energy on a live call. Brian Rose, you, you are a legend, my friend. It's the only thing in the market where you can get all information and learn everything what you need to know. Everything is so clear and so well done. And I am um, just forever grateful for this program. It made me feel so much more confident about crypto than I did before. I did not anticipate how passionate I was going to become about it. This course has been like a big learning experience for me, not just in the crypto space, but just uh, an overall uh, balance of life. What I've learned is, you know, how to take ownership, you know, of my life in a way that um, I really, I really hadn't before. Yeah, you can't put a price on that, really. I would recommend it to anybody top-notch. Excellence does not come cheap. You know, so if you want excellence, you got to pay for it, but it's so worth it. Pull the trigger. That's what this course is about. You're not going to regret it, really. It's amazing. Thank you, Brian and team. So what are you waiting for? Crypto is happening now. Click the link below, submit your application, and let me mentor you on how to create generational wealth and build the decentralized financial infrastructure of the future.